up, pen pals? Tom Otto with Gold Spot Pens here today to talk to you about stub nibs. If you've been following the channel, you knew this was coming. We talked about flex nibs last week, and the week before that, it was stub versus flex nibs. It was only natural that we talk about stub nibs in more detail. If you don't follow our channel and have no clue about what I'm talking about, hit the subscribe button and take a look at the Pens for Beginners playlist for a primer on fountain pens and nib sizes. Fountain pen enthusiasts usually start off with the standard round nib that produces a monoline. No matter which direction you write or how much pressure you put on the tines, it will produce the same line thickness. If you thought writing with a fountain pen is a game changer for your handwriting, you're about to see what a stub nib can do to elevate it to the next level. Stub nibs accomplish line variation by virtue of its nib shape. Your typical round nib has a spherical ball shape of iridium tipping material. The tipping of a stub nib is flattened to a rectangular shape. This allows the stub to lay down a thick downstroke and a thinner horizontal line. Writing the same sentence using a round nib versus a stub nib produces noticeably different results. The stub nib automatically adds calligraphic flair to your everyday handwriting with hardly any adjustment to your writing style. Just like a standard round writing nib, stub nibs vary. They range from 0.6 millimeters to 2.3 millimeters, which is a measurement of the downstroke. The smaller the size, the less line variation is noticeable. The broader the size, the more drastic the line variation and the more ink that is put on the page. You may have heard of italic nibs. They're quite similar to stub nibs with a subtle difference. Stub nibs have rounded corners to provide a smoother writing experience. Italic nibs have sharper edges to accentuate line variation, even with smaller tip sizes. Italic nibs tend to have a smaller sweet spot and exhibit more feedback. To add calligraphic flair to your everyday handwriting, I'd suggest starting with a 1.1 millimeter stub size. The downstroke is a bit thicker than a western broad nib, so you'll need to make sure that you've got fountain pen friendly paper to handle the heavier lines of ink. Regardless if you're looking to spend $30 or $300 on a fountain pen, there's a great stub nib option for every budget. For under $50, you can get the Pilot Metropolitan, a favorite starter fountain pen with a 1.0 millimeter stub nib. Swap the nib on a Lamy Safari with a calligraphy style nib in the 1.1, 1.5, or 1.9 millimeter sizes for an economical stub nib. You can also get a pocket-sized Coeco Sport with a variety of stub nib sizes. The least expensive option is to get a Schaefer calligraphy pen in a set of three nib sizes. Between $50 and $99, the options open up with several pen designs from Monteverde and Conklin. Check out the Conklin Duragraph and the Monteverde Giant Sequoia. In 2019, Retro 51 upgraded their nib offerings to include a 1.1 millimeter stub on their fountain pens. If you'd like a pen that can hold a lot of ink, an Opus 88 with a stub nib is a great combo. Between $100 and $200, you can opt for a Visconti Rembrandt, a Sailor 1911 Standard, or Pro Gear Slim with a 14 karat gold music nib. American-made Edison pens and Franklin Christoph pens are also great steel nib options at this price point. At $200 and up, Take a look at the Leonardo Officina fountain pens, Sailor's 21 karat gold music nib on a 1911 large or pro gear standard, an Aurora 88 or Optima, or a Platinum 3776 Century music nib. I own and write with stub nibs from each of these price categories and can honestly say that there's a place for all of these pens in my collection. So, let's say you've got yourself a new stub nib fountain pen and are ready to get writing. Here are a few tips for a satisfying stub writing experience. Make sure both tines are touching evenly on the page as you write. Rolling or leaning to one side will cause the pen to miss a part, if not all the stroke. Use fountain pen friendly paper. Like I mentioned earlier, the stub will lay down more ink than a standard broad nib, so you'll need to make sure the paper will handle the increased flow. Try different nib angles to the baseline. A zero degree nib angle results in a thick downstroke and a thin horizontal stroke. A 90 degree nib angle results in a thick horizontal stroke and a thin downstroke. This effect is similar to what is achieved with an architect nib grind. A 45 degree nib angle will give an italic appearance to your cursive lettering. Last, try reverse writing. Some stub nibs, like the Sailor Music nib, write a thinner, drier line when you flip the nib over to write nib side down. 
We hope that you found this beginner's video on stub nibs helpful. If you have any questions or are in need of some guidance, please feel free to leave a comment below. Make sure that you hit that subscribe button for more helpful how-to writing videos, pen reviews, unboxings, and interviews. Thank you for watching. Stay inky, my friends. Take care.